I opened this to set it up and start this video and had to stop because it's just how well packaged this all is. Now, I'm not gonna turn into doing unboxing and setup videos. There's plenty of those, but let me just show you like what a good job they did on this. Look at that. You open this up and you feel like you bought something. Good job, X-Tool. Good job. And here's the little rotary attachment box. Very nice. That's all I'm gonna show. I'm just gonna set it up and we'll jump to doing some work with it. If you don't receive things a lot, and I receive a lot of tools and machines, just this is what I do, and also being a business, I order a lot of stuff that's shipped here. The amount of stuff that gets damaged in transit is unreal. But when I see stuff packaged like that, the odds of it getting damaged in transit, so much lower, and I appreciate that. Waiting on something to come in and then it shows up and it's broke and you gotta like go through returns and all that, Setup was pretty painless, took me about 30 minutes just because I was checking everything as we go, but pretty much just maybe 20 little screws and then plugging in all the connectors. The instructions are Lego style, lots of pictures, a little bit of text, but the pictures just walk you through everything. So that's really good. Um, nice thing I really like too is I'm a big Lightburn fan, so they have a configuration file for this for Lightburn. So just downloaded that from the website, stuck that in the Lightburn, and I didn't have to worry about doing manual, manual setup, which not that that's very hard. So yeah, the other thing I like about the new version of Lightburn is it actually has a material test built in, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. Uh, I've just got a piece of like hardboard in here, so we're gonna do a little material test going from 50 millimeters a second, stepping up in 50 millimeter a second increments up to 400, and then at 30% power up to 100% power. So let that grid it out and uh, see how it does. So here's our test. You can freeze frame this on, on this if you want to, but basically you see here, I just ran from 30 to 80% power. Really don't like running over 80% because you tend to shorten the life of stuff and started at 100 and then went up to 450 millimeter per second increments. These are millimeters per second. So you can see we got pretty nice burns. Can't really quite tell depth. You can tell it tapers off here, but to get through the veneer and get a nice little char, you can see at around, you know, 75% power, 200 millimeters a second, which is pretty quick. We can get some nice engraves. And if we want to run a little bit more conservative, but still get marking, we can even bump all the way up to 300 and run as low as 50 and still get, you know, some nice impressions. It's going to be easy to see. And on the cutting, funny story here, I uh, based this test off of my experience with my 100 watt CO2 laser and actually ended up burning horribly um, through and onto my bench with these settings and it was so bad it made me realize something must be wrong with my co2 laser so checked it and it was pretty out of alignment now it's all dialed back in but yeah like uh even at you know say 75 percent power three passes at 10 millimeters a second i can cut through this eighth inch material that seems like a good setting and yeah highly recommend light burn and then when anytime you work with a new material what I like to do is run a fill test and a cut test and then write what laser that's for and keep that on hand for every new material. That way, whenever I have a project, I can just grab that those test cards and kind of know where I'm at. So yeah, I came with this handy little tool kit that you can keep all your extra little bits and bobs in. Um, it also had the air hookup, so if you get the optional air assist, it's already tied into the nozzle. One of the things I like for easy focusing is it's got this little arm that swings down and all you do is loosen it until it touches tighten it up swing the arm out of the way and now you're in focus and right over here is the little knob that loosens and tightens it and here's somewhere they really thought extra so you see this little millimeter gauge mark here and this so if you're doing cutting, which being a 20 watt machine, you can do some serious cutting. You don't want to set your focus to the top of the material like we have here, like you would do with engraving typically, but towards the center of the material. So based on how thick your material is, you can loosen this and slide this whole housing to um, basically adjust so that way you can still use the arm for focusing because you create an offset and then focus with the art. So that's pretty nifty. Now, uh, being it's almost Christmas, I went on Etsy and found some little ornament SVG files. I really think one of the cool things you do with the lasers is stack layers when you put them together. So these are stacking ornaments. So let's uh, set up a time lapse, run these, and see how it goes.
That was a 25 minute burn. Not bad at all, considering we cut out four pieces and it looks like, yep, that one had just a little bit hanging on. Ah, oh, yeah, a little, few little stubborn spots in the wood. Um, there we go. The others popped out fine. Now, it did take me three goes to get this to come out right, because <clears throat> even though I framed it to make sure everything was where it needed to be, I still kept hitting the hard limit switches a little bit. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Probably a software thing. But I just made sure I was well in the middle and had plenty of buffer all the way around and then everything went fine. So let's uh, take these apart, give them a little wipe off the best way to get rid of char i found is a little bit of denatured alcohol on a cloth and then it dries quick too and maybe hit these with a little paint and glue them together and see how they came out There we go, pretty quickly cranked out two little uh, ornaments, probably in like a little over an hour total, you know, half an hour setting up the machine, a few minutes to load the file I bought off Etsy into Lightburn, and then get it going. Uh, the big thing with this that makes it different is it has the 20 watt laser head option. So the interesting thing with that there is diodes are normally limited to about five watts power total. The way 10 watt and 20 watt machines come out is it was they figured out pretty quick how to put two beams together to make a 10 watt laser, but the mirror arrangement or whatever voodoo they figured out to be able to get four diode lasers stacked is what enabled them to do a 20 watt. And I've used five and 10 watt machines quite a bit and going up to 20 watts, just as you'd imagine, it's got a lot more juice where that's important is that just lets you go so much faster. So going up to 20 watts, like I wouldn't try using a five or 10 watt machine for any kind of production or really business other than just like small customizing. I'd use like a 10 watt machine just to customize other items I'm making maybe. But with this thing, you've got enough juice that you could start running a business off of it, you know, and actually be able to turn some profit for your time based on how quick this machine can go. It's it's pretty wild. Um, and there's a bunch of accessories. So the deal with the air assist, if you're engraving, air assist doesn't make a big difference. But if you're doing any cutting, that's where air assist really comes in to be helpful to blow all the smoke and particulates out of the way and also help blow the heat down to whatever material you're cutting. As you imagine that smoke, all the burning, you know, isn't just magical gas. It has particulates in it that block the path of the laser to get all the energy into the material. So with air assist to help evacuate all that smoke and debris, then you're able to move more of the energy you're producing into the material and cut faster. So if you're doing a lot of cutting, air assist is very helpful. There's quite a few other accessories they have for this machine, such as risers. These are two risers together and these screw quickly onto the bottom to elevate it. So if you're not just doing flat stuff that you're working on boxes or anything, you don't have to come up with some weird table arrangement to be able to hold your piece. You can just easily lift it all up without having to, you know, stack wood blocks or something, which I've done quite a bit before. And then also they have a rotary available that has quite a few different supports and attachments. So anything round or tapered, it has what you need to be able to get that object under the laser head, support it, and then rotate it if it's a straight cylinder or tapered cylinder or you know short and fat or long and skinny there's a way to get that thing under here they've super thought that through i've struggled with rotaries before but that's got everything you need in it and yeah i'm just blown away by the uh, power of this thing it's pretty unreal so if you've been debating you know i want to get a laser but is the 20 watt worth the uh, extra spend to get the extra juice. If you're going at this very seriously and it's not just something you kind of want to play with and just have around to mess with once in a while, you're probably fine with 10 watt. But if you're like, you know, running any kind of 
production or business or think you want to try to do things to uh, sell, just spend the extra money, have it up front and get the 20 watt. Like it's gonna, it's gonna blow you away with how much work you can do, how fast. Anyway, hope you learned something, were entertained. Hope you learned something, were inspired or at least entertained. Happy holidays. Sorry for being all nasally and rambly on cold medicine. But anyway, until next time, make time to make something.